Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, they're battling off in a GOP nomination. Meanwhile, the rest of the Republican base really divided over who's more dangerous for the party. Former presidential, uh, GOP presidential nominee Bob Dole is backing Trump, calling him a deal maker, and says that his attitude is more pal palatable for Congress, whereas Cruz's go it alone stance could be cataclysmic. Back with me now, Katrina Pearson, Andrew Peake, and Jesse Jane Duff. Uh, Andrew Peake, let me go with you on this because uh, th there's a good piece in, in the, in the uh, New York Times here about this being the biggest intra-party battle since Goldwater versus uh, uh, Nelson Rockefeller. What do you make of that? And, and what, just explain to the audience just how big the stakes are here. Well, I think, you know, after eight years of an Obama presidency, I think the stakes are massive. And I think increasingly the party elites view them uh, as massive and willing to, they're willing to do whatever it takes to win, right? The bottom line between Cruz and Trump is that Trump pulls something like 20 percent of Democratic primary voters over the Republican side. Cruz pulls zero. So I think looking at the two leading uh, vote getters in Iowa and elsewhere, uh, Republican elites are increasingly going to say, okay, let's go with the guy who at least somehow gives us a shot at victory. Of course, though, uh, Jesse Jane, a lot of people say Marco Rubio is the perfect across the aisle uh, candidate. Hispanic, young, charismatic, millennial votes, uh, you know. So I thought this election was all about grassroots, back to conservative principles, not necessarily appeasing the Washington establishment, but they're jumping on board. Well, what's attractive to most of these uh, voters right now is that uh, not not Cruz and Trump, uh, Rubio, but Cruz and Trump are both considered outsiders. And the reason Cruz is falling into that category is exactly what Bob Dole criticized him for. He has actually gone up and kept his Tea Party principles, while many people who ran on the Tea Party platform did not. He kept it and he defended them and he has stood his ground. He is very policy oriented. He articulates it well and. That is seen as an outsider because he has shaken it up in D.C. Katrina, in the same article, they say that Mr. Trump, a lot of essays have been written about him. And we should have had Eric Erickson on because they mentioned him, too, arguing that Donald Trump has no commitment to restraining the role of government, possesses authoritarian impulses, and is antithetical to conservative principles. A big argument over what a conservative is these days. You say Donald Trump, though, fits the bill. Well, yes, at this point in time, we just mentioned how poorly things have gone over the last eight years. But I will also say from experience, many of these people writing these stories have never even sat in the same room and had a discussion with Mr. Trump. So how would they know? What I do know is Sam Clovis, who's our policy director, is one of the strongest conservative constitutionalists out there. And Mr. Trump is one of the only candidates I've ever met that actually listens to his team. More importantly, uh, you know, my colleague was right. This is about also winning in November. The establishment may not like Ted Cruz very much. They do fear Donald Trump. However, what we've seen in Mr. Trump is the ability to build a coalition. They're making a big deal about making deals, but the problem is the Republicans haven't made deals in a very long time. In right. fact, they've capitulated and given up everything. So it'd be nice to have someone to go and make some demands and get something in return. 